Currently in Zambia, we only have uh, six uh, trained uh, oncologists. The biggest chunk is uh, the cervical cancer with uh, a frequency of 33% uh, and with a mortality of about 42%. We do not have uh, a gyne oncologist, neither a surgical oncologist. Apparently, once I finish uh, Make Africa Gyne Oncology Fellowship, I'm going to be the first gyne oncologist in my country. The lack of a comprehensive national screening program for most of the cancers, especially cervical cancer and breast cancer, which are known to be preventable, but also curable if got at an early stage. Cancer is ranked fifth cause of death in Rwanda. Annual incidence among female is 145 per 100,000 people, and among male is 130. So in terms of clinical care, we are still lagging behind. I was impressed in the first place by numbers of patients, Tata Memorial Hospital and uh, different cases of cancer. It was it exceeded my expectation. I've never seen this number of patients in terms of cancer. The cancer incidence in Ethiopia is uh, like more than 60,000 per month. Like, among this, greater than two-thirds of the patients die in the same year of diagnosis, which shows that there is a very big lack of awareness in the country. Besides that, uh, lack of access to oncology cancer health care, only three uh, actively working clinical oncologists, which means when we make the proportion, it will be like one clinical oncologist for 30,000 million. They have to travel uh, over about 1,000 kilometers to get to this one center to access this treatment. The cancer care in my country is centralized. The, the main reason is infrastructure, which is expensive, the medical equipment, which are also expensive. The lack of skilled manpower is the main reason uh, for these activities to be centralized. This is a country of 40 million people with less than 10 qualified medical oncologists. But because in the peripheral hospitals we don't have people who know how to diagnose cancer, the diagnosis are made late. So at the end of the day, we end up with poor outcome in our cancer patients. Cancer management is not done by one individual. The appropriate management is multidisciplinary. You need surgical oncology, palliative specialists, nurses, paramedics, radiologists, intervention. You need a lot of well-trained people. Mark Foundation giving me this opportunity to pursue a one-year course in adult medical oncology has been a great opportunity. I've been exposed to management of people from the extreme, those who present early and those who present very late. In other words, how you tail out some treatment for somebody who presents late, how to tail out some treatment for somebody who can't afford very expensive cancer medicines and still get a benefit and a good quality of life. So far, I have been exposed to so many disciplines of oncology, preventive oncology, to gyne oncology, to surgical oncology, radiation oncology. This program is going to help Namibia as a whole because when I conclude my fellowship and going back home, I will be able to implement what I have learned in Tata Memorial Hospital. This exposure, this training is going to bring to four additions that have been lacking for the past years that uh, our cancer center has been in existence. In addition, it's going to provide also a platform for linkages with uh, my colleagues that I've met, also to improve on, on the cancer care as a region, also to participate in cancer research, and also 
the huge numbers of patients that you, you tend to see and that gives you a much needed exposure within the shortest period of time that you can have. Being a world class centre in the evaluation of children, I've seen full workup where a patient is fully evaluated, assigned the proper risk category and then taken through uh, the proper treatment. I've also spent time looking after uh, at how patients are followed up thereafter. My expectation from the train is just uh, to mention one is to upgrade uh, and to update my knowledge and skill and the second is after the training just to go back and to expand what well, this is just to start the fellowship program in pediatrics in childhood and to increase the quality of the service and to engage in research. Uh, with this good exposure of uh, varieties of cancers I hope to be equipped in skills. It will make me uh, be a better clinician and educator and a researcher. But in addition to that, I will be able to advocate for patient because I, I, now I know what should be done. So the fellowship program, I believe, is one that is going to grow and I believe that one will be helpful in building the capacity, not just for the your doctor, but also of the fellows proposing policy changes that may actually lead to improvements within service delivery for oncology. For the new entrants um, who have been accepted on uh, Make Africa Oncology Fellowship, I think the advice that uh, I could give them is that, uh, first of all, it is important for them to spend some time, especially in their country, in uh, cancer centers, so that uh, by the time they come here, things are not going to be like new. I know we, we come from different backgrounds, but one of the things I've come to learn, I think that will cut across, is to utilize this training exposure much to appropriate your country's needs, because I think we are different. And as such, you need to make uh, use of the shortfalls that you have in your country so that you can be more useful when you go back. A great honor and thank you to Make Foundation for giving us this opportunity and privilege to come and get knowledge, experience, and go and help our people back home. So I really appreciate the great initiative taken by Mark Africa Oncology Fellowship Program and the leadership initiatives of Dr. Rasha College. And after this training, they will be able to impart the same type of knowledge, training, staging, and protocol guidelines when they go back to their country. So I wish them a good luck, all the best.